This is Twit. Well, if you were if you thought OS iOS or iOS as they say seven was controversial, Sarah Johnny Ive has been leading a significant design overhaul for OS ten. And the new design will be the operating system's cornerstone new feature. We don't know what it's going to look like, but Johnny's got his hand in it. Uh, that, that worry, that that rumor worries me a little scares bit. Scares the hell out of me. Uh, well, because I mean, look at look how much uh, Microsoft isn't like Apple, but look how much failure they have had to get people to accept Windows eight. Yeah. Last week at at Bill, they were most of the announcements about Windows eight were about how. Okay, we are rolling back about a third of the things that a couple years ago we told you were the signature features of Windows 8. Uh, Windows Windows users are a lot more intractable than Mac users. Mac users are more open to change. But nonetheless, if you the, the, look, remember how badly a lot of people reacted at iOS 7, and they really didn't have a choice but to upgrade, and they had to go up, go up and upgrade, and people are still not really, a lot of people are still not very happy with it. So if you take the operating system that people know and love and rely on, and if you make changes that aren't immediately tactile as, a, as, as, a, as, a, as an improvement of what went before, you're going to have a lot of people who might be looking at Windows 8 now and saying that, well, look, if I'm going to have to switch to something that I don't really like, I'm not really familiar with, I may as well go for something that I don't really like, not familiar with, that costs $500 less in, in, a, in, a, in a laptop form. Yeah. So that's that's I'm that, I'm not I'm not predicting doom. I'm just saying that that's it's an interest it's an interestingly gutsy thing for them to do to really severely monkey with the Mac operating system if that's what they're doing. Is it you know I there was there was a big brouhaha over seven iOS seven. Yeah, I mean my understanding is that this was always in the cards. It's just again they had so much to do right. with iOS seven they couldn't do it at the same time. Otherwise we would have seen them you know the redesigns happen simultaneously but there's a couple of things to remember one is that it's a big halo product so people go from ios to os 10 and apple spent a lot of years trying to make it not identical but at least familiar to people who make that switch and they're going to want to keep maybe a little bit of that familiarity i think we can all take solace that apple really understands that os 10 and ios are separate things with separate requirements but i think we'll see large principles like the deference uh the clarity and the depth sort of play through um, a friend of mine, Dave Wiskus, did an article for Macworld saying iCloud.com could be a hint as to where they go. But I think what we'll really see is a version, not of iOS 7, but of that same vision applied to the realities of the Mac. I, 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 I do agree with uh, what Renee is saying about the general attitude towards uh, towards a, towards a streamlining and fixing uh, Mac OS X. Uh, my, my, the nature of my concern is that I don't, I, I, my personal preference is that I think that they kind of Sistine Chapel OS, uh, iOS with I OS 7. They did a little bit too much scrubbing and a little bit too much cleaning, and they left something that really doesn't, is, it really isn't as clear as what they took away. So if they were to take a device that, you know, I use with a really big screen, 13 inches minimum, uh, you know, 25 inches, 24 inches sometimes, and they simply are going to be removing what they see as superfluous interface and gloss. And in the, as a result, they make it harder for me to set this up the way I like it and to navigate my way around it. I'm sorry, just visually anchor myself. Where, here's the task I'm doing. Here are things that, have, that are not so important, but they're, they're still in my frame of perception. That could be a problem. It, it, would, it would be a much longer adaptation process than it was for iOS 7. But there's still felt there, Andy. They have to get rid of that felt. No more felt. No more stitching. Damn it! That's my desk blotter, Jody. Put it back. <laughs> if it's on the if it's on the computer, you can mess with it. If it's in my house, leave it alone. Yeah, they, they didn't have time for Game Center last year, much to many people's chagrin. Still there. Except for uh, that milk. Yeah. You're right. It is a couple days past the expiration date. Uh, you can throw that away. But give me my desk blotter. <laughs> uh, apparently, they've been testing features like Siri on the desktop. That's good. Uh, <laughs> compatibility. Between AirDrop on the desktop and AirDrop on the iOS. Seems like that should have just been there, but uh, no. So the, the thing with AirDrop, and it's an interesting story, is that they did it, and it, Steve Jobs said, too complicated, not going to ship this. They did it again. Scott Forrestal said, too complicated, not going to ship this. So they went back and they made an entirely new version of AirDrop that would satisfy the simplicity requirements, but it was no longer compatible with the Mac version, with the theory being that now they have to go back and rejigger them for compatibility. But they gave him the same name to add. So it's future compatible, but it's confusing in the present. Hey, Bluetooth file transfer still works. You gotta wonder how yeah, really. You gotta wonder how many people were bit by that. 
I, kn I knew this because I think you told me this, uh, Renee, some time ago. Yeah. But uh, how many people have tried to share to an iPhone using AirDrop from a desktop and going, well, it just won't work. I don't understand. It's not it. working. Bring them closer. Tap think, them. Tap them. Think how much it's wasted most, time there is. And it's, and it's the most frustrating type of feature because this is something that I was going through just last week uh, when, I was, uh, when I was using uh, Fire TV where it's like, okay, so now let's try streaming the my Amazon Music Library. Okay, I don't see an app for it. Okay, well, it must be on the App Store. Yeah, but no, there's I don't no app it. for it. Ah, there, there must be a settings for it. Cause, yeah, because it, it's such an obvious feature. You will not believe that this feature right. does not exist. You just assume, oh, I must be an idiot. I I'm just can't idiot. find it. Yep. And then you find out that, no, it is not possible to use this banner feature that, that would be so useful between these two devices. But no, it's not ready yet. Well, this is worse because Steve said, let's make it simpler. It's too complicated. But... What what could be more complicated than having two fe incompatible features with exactly the same name? Yeah. And the th the debate was that if they change the name later, it's confusing. But you know, at least oh. people in the present would be not confused. And I would bet that that's killed AirDrop because enough people tried it, it didn't work. They go, well, AirDrop doesn't work, and that's it. Although I mean, there there's the amount of iOS devices versus the amount of Mac devices yeah. means that that's a smaller subset of their users who get that problem. That's what's depressing, really.